working here. My office is about the size of the state of Rhode Island. People don't understand that cowboys even exist. They don't even know this part of the world exists. cattle horseback on large ranches and stuff was perfected a long time ago, a long time ago. There was an era there, I got, we're gonna get rid of these cow camps, these wagons. We don't need that stuff, we only need half the horses. And I see a lot of people now, you know, scratching their head like, ah, man, we do need those cow camps, you know. Fuel's three, four bucks an hour, tires are $1,500 a set, they don't need to be driving back and forth. There's a lot of those old timers, that, I mean, they dang sure knew how to run cows. I don't think that people probably realize that we're so discriminating in our tastes, that there's so much, like I say, refinement, uh, artistry that goes into it. There's a lot more to it than just sitting on a horse, I guess, looking like the Marlboro Man. <laughs> On my mother's side of the family, it's my great granddad that came here on a herd in 1881. My dad's side of the family, they came out of the range wars in South Texas and came up this way. And agriculture, cows, horses, it's in my DNA. I don't know anything else. time I could walk good, they basically had to almost tie me home. I always wanted to know what's over that next ridge. I always wanted to know what it was like to work here, or Montana, Texas, or wherever. And I still do. I look at a map and I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> I'd like to know what's over there. There's some romance to cowboy. And when I say romance, I'm not talking about a woman. I'm talking about their love for the land and their love for what they're doing. I would call it romantic. I graduated high school. The next morning I was at the wagon catching horses at daylight. Started then and never have figured out how to stop. The only reason we're here is to take care of these cattle. I mean, that's it. In our part of the world, if somebody calls you a cow puncher, that's a compliment. And uh, most of the guys that I know in this country, I'd be proud to call them cow punchers. If you get done at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's one thing. But if you get done at 8 o'clock at night, if, that, if it needs done, you need to do it. I enjoy all of it. I mean, the, who, who doesn't like seeing a calf born? You, you know at the end of the day, you've done something good, something worthy. It's, it's about keeping everything going to where that we can be sustainable here. It just tickles me to death that they pay me to ride horses and chase cows all day, every day. I've got a daughter and a son that was raised here and, and they've learned to trade. Well, they can come back and they can always catch a horse and get busy and make a hand. We have two other children. We had a daughter that uh, Shree carried all the way to the, to birth, and we lost her. And then we had a, a son after her. 
We lost him when he was nearly four to a horse accident. It hadn't been our faith in God. We couldn't have never made that. A lot of people probably would have thought we'd have left, but it's our way of life, and it's what we are. I can tell you that. Lots of generations, lots of history. Ranching's not dead. They got kids coming up. Probably have grandkids before long. It goes on. <laughs> Those ranches are still, still operating. They still pull the wagon out spring and fall. Trying to, trying to progress in the future, but you're trying to kind of stay in the past. It's kind of a, kind of a conundrum on the guy a little bit, you know. It's a good life. Been a good life, and it still is. You know, cowboys know what you do. It's who you are. Thank you.